In this video, we're going to have a look at these three different statistical analysis that you can do, the median, the mean, and the mode. We're going to look at the basics of what they are, when to use it, and how you can calculate them in Power BI. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So these three things, the median, the mean, and the modes are statistical analysis that you can use to try to find the sort of central tendency of your data, sort of like the midpoint of it. So if you already work with Power BI, you already be familiar with mean is and what it does, because it's basically average. And as you know, average is basically a way for you to kind of understand the central tendency of your data. And let me show you first how to do it and how you can determine it in Power BI. So here we are in my very simple Power BI report that I prepared for you today. We just have two tables. I'm just going to visualize first one of the tables that we have here. I'm going to have the, uh, the names and the ages. So I want to make sure that it's not summarized. Just give us the names and the ages like this. And uh, we'll convert it into a column chart here so that we can see the the kind of age and the names. So here we are. And then we'll adjust it slightly so that we can have some data labels like this. And then we can hide that, that y axis. Now, yeah. let's see here. So we have a seven, about seven employees here in our table, each in with different ages. And uh, let's say we want to understand and get the average or the mean across all of our employees to understand what is the kind of typical age for our fictional company, right? So an easy way to do it from this chart is by going to more options and doing a reference bar, a reference line, for example, change it to an average line. And then we can just add a data label there, add it to the right so that we can see it. And here you go. So this is the sort of average age that we have in our fictional company is 25.29. That's an easy way to do it, but you can also do it quite easily in DAX. So we're going to create a new measure here. I'm going to name this one uh, mean, and I'm going to just use the function average and we'll give it the age to average. Close it. We'll bring it to a separate card like this. And you'll see that both the value there on our reference line, as well as here on our card is the same 25.29. So it's pretty basic, but I'm going to go through it anyway. So how this is calculated is by essentially going through all of the different ages that we have across our employees. So adding up 28, 27, 26, all of those ages, and then dividing that total to the total number of employees that we have. So we have seven. So that would give you the mean or average. And this is a typical use case of when you would use mean or average because the values that we have are sort of evenly distributed. So they're not too far off from each other. And average as a statistical kind of tool is a good way to understand the central tendency for evenly distributed data. But what if your data is not evenly distributed? So we typically call it kind of skewed distribution. How do you deal with that? So let me show you the kind of pitfalls of using just mean or average. So I have another table here, employees, employees table. We're going to do the same thing, uh, put it into a bar chart like this. As you can see, we have an extra person here. And to make it even clearer, I'm going to add a data label so that you can see the age of that person. And now if we add that reference line like we did with our previous one. Add an average line here, add date label, and put that line, put that label, sorry, on the right hand side. You can see that average is slightly higher. And that's because the, the person that we've added um, has a sort of anomaly. So it kind of deviates from the sort of typical tendency. And that's pushed the average to be five years higher than what it should be. So what this basically is saying is that the average age for our employees is 30 years old, but that's not the case because we have basically one person who is 65 and drives 
driving that average up. That's because it's being calculated kind of evenly distributed across all of these different employees. So 30 years old as the average age is not truly representative of the whole population. So you can see that no one except Rachel is age 30 years or higher. So this is what we call an even distribution of data. And in these cases, it's a good alternative to use what we call the median, which is another way that you can try to find the center point of your data. Now, luckily in Power BI, there's a function that you can use, median, which calculates it for you. But I'm going to explain to you how to calculate it anyway. So I'm going to go and create a new measure here. I'm going to call it median, and then we'll use the median function. So it just asks for what you want to use as a median. So we'll use the age from our employees table, drag it here in a separate card. And here you go. So what it's giving us is 25.5. And don't get confused, 30.25 is the mean, whereas the median is the 25.5. So as you can see, although we have this 65 as the sort of anomaly, as our kind of skewed data, it still gives us a better representation of what the typical age is of our employee, which is around sort of 25. How does median work? It tries to calculate or find out where the middle point is of our data when it's sorted in an ascending or descending order. So what it does is here, for example, it's already sorted by descending. So it looks for where the middle point is between all of this data. So if there is a middle point, then it will just take the number in that middle. Whereas if there's none, it will try to calculate between the two. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different employees. So there's no middle point. So it's between 26 and 25. So 26 plus 25 divided by two gives us the median 25.5 because that's the middle part of kind of our data set. In this case, because we are looking at the data set that is pretty small, it kind of pretty easy for us to understand if the distribution of your data is sort of skewed or not. But a good indicator, if you can't uh, figure out if your data is skewed or not, is by calculating both the mean and the median and see how far they are from each other. If they are too far from each other, then that means that you're your sort of data is, is skewed in its distribution. But if they're close to each other, then that's about right. The last thing that I want to cover here is mode, which is essentially finding the most frequent occurrence of a value within your, your data set. Now, there's no built-in way to calculate this in Power BI, but you can calculate it. So we're going to go through it. I'm going to show you how to do it. And then I'm going to explain to you why I don't, I don't recommend you to use it. So to start with the mode, I need to break down the steps into bite-sized chunks so that um, both me and you can kind of understand it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new table, an empty table here. I'm going to name this one uh, mode. It doesn't matter. And we're going to use add columns. So add columns needs a table, which we're going to give it the employees SK. And then we're going to give it a value frequent, like because we want to calculate and get the highest frequency or the highest occurring age within our, our table. So we're going to name this one just frequency. And then the expression that we want with it, that's actually that's just name is frequency like this. And then the expression that we want to have here is to basically count the occurrences like this. So if you hit enter, you'll see that it gives us the uh, list of all of our different employees, their age, as well as their uh, the, the frequency. So it doesn't quite make sense yet um, because we need to group these into ages instead of uh, individual employees so that we can group um, those ages and then calculate how many times we can see them in the table. So where the employee SK's employee table is, we'll change it to use values, which returns a table, and then we will give it the column age. So what it will do is it will give us all of the ages that we, the occurrences of the different ages that we have in our table. And then it calculates, it counts the frequency. Now it just gives us seven and that's because we have seven across all of this and we don't really have any Thing that changes that context of a count yet, but we do need to count it somehow. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply wrap this with a calculate function. So that will change that filter um, context. So I'm going to close it like this, just so that we can read it quite easily. And uh, I think I messed something up here. We'll need to count the employees from our 
skewed table like this. Here we go. So as you can see now, there's 24 that we need because that is the one that is most frequent. So it's appeared twice. So we have two people that are age 24 and that's what we want to, to do. So to get this, this value, we need to use the function called top n, which basically allows us to choose which one we want to get from a table. So we'll say we want to get the top one value and then it needs a few different um, expressions. So it, it needs the order by, so we want to sort it by age, obviously. And then the order, we'll need to sort it by descending. Since we want the top one, that will give us, actually that needs to, the sort needs to be the frequency from our table because that's the one that has the, the highest, uh, the highest frequency will need to be at the top. So we will need to reference that frequency like this, and that will give us 24, which is the highest frequency. So that's the table that we need, but I'm only good doing it in a table here so that we can preview step by step how we broke that down to get the, the mode basically. So now we want to take this and put it in a measure so we can calculate the mode. So now we can simply go here, create a new measure and we'll name this one mode. And then we need to wrap it in an iterator. So we'll use max. And for the table, we've already created basically everything that we needed, which is the top end. It looks scary, but as you can see, we've just sort of broken it down. And then the expression that we want here is basically just the age. So now if you close that, bring in the modes, you can see here, it just gives us the most uh, occurring age, which is 24. So now that you know what mode is and how you can use it to find the central tendency, from my personal perspective, I've never used mode to understand these, the central tendency of my data. And that's because it has a lot of limitations. So for example, if you're working with uh, skewed data that can affect what this mode is wildly. Also, if you have small or bimodal data sets where you you only have one or two values um, this value might be completely off the charts so I don't even think about using mode to begin with and also it doesn't work quite well if your data is a continuous data so for example if you're trying to um, analyze height or weight for um, your employees the better calculation for it would be to use median or average mean and that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with these three different ways to find the central tendency of your data in Power BI. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.